night and welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. My name is Paula and today's video is the next in the uh, Wheel of the Year series on the Sabbats and today's subject is Imbolc. And Imbolc is traditionally celebrated on the from the evening sunset on February 1st through sunset February 2nd. And this is the um, the Celtic um, holiday associated with the coming of spring, not the vernal equinox like is now traditionally celebrated. In bulk was the first signs that, um, you know, uh, winter, you know, is coming to an end, spring is around the corner. In bulk itself means in Gaelic, in the milk or use milk. Um, and this is traditionally um, derived from the fact that the um, female sheep, the ewes, were lactating because they had just, you know, given birth. It's, it's a lambing season. Um, so, you know, and these are the, the firstborn lambs of the year. So that's when you know, you know, that spring's around, um, that, you know, you start in with the, the um, lambing and then, you know, goats and calving and things of that nature, okay? And you've got to remember that these celebrations are based on an ancient agricultural society. We have a kind of a hard time rectifying between our modern viewpoint and, um, you know, from living in a cities where you're not on a farm, you know, dealing with um, lambs being born, calving or anything like that. You're not, you know, actively tending, you know, a major garden or fields or, you know, um, dealing with a working farm from most um, people's modern viewpoint. You know, most people go to the store and don't think twice about how that food got there or, you know, what was done to bring that to your table. So traditionally, um, Imbolc is affiliated with um, the goddess Bridget and it's also, it's called St. Bridget's Day that was uh, co-opted by the Catholic Church to kind of uh, compete and get, you know, converting Christians away from their pagan holidays and um, move them over to a, a Christian viewpoint. Um, and it's also one of the two Sabbats that are affiliated with a particular deity in mind. And this one is, you know, affiliated with Bridget. Then its counterpart is Lunasa, um, that is associated with the god Luke um, in August. Okay, some people refer to that as Lamas instead of Lunasa. Um, now, one of the things um, that is particularly interesting about this holiday um, is that it also affiliates and focuses on the home, okay? It is, the theme of it is purity, growth, and renewal, the reunion of the goddess and the god, fertility and get rid of the old and welcoming the new, okay? Um, Bridget is the painter, is uh, affiliated with smithcraft, blacksmithery, midwifery, uh, poetry, and she is a fire goddess. So, you know, most um, of your um, ritual preparations and everything usually inv involve lighting, you know, a candle to keep your, your fires burning. Um, in ancient society, you have to remember that tending a home fire's flame was very important to, you know, keep your family from freezing. You know, you would bank the fire down a little at night and then, 
still have it smoldering and embers ready to go to build your fire for the next morning. Um, but you know, this time of year was brutal and it was really important for them um, to remember that the light was getting stronger and that to maintain the, the fire of the home front. Um, so with that, a lot of the activities during in bulk involve um, like your spring cleaning, things you would typically associate with that. Um, it would include uh, planting your seedlings um, for transplanting into your gardens and fields in the spring. Um, my ritual for in bulk usually involves um, doing something with seedlings. Um, it's also a time when um, you can re-up your um, defenses and protections for your home um, and around your family, clearing negative energy, away from especially your like sacred space your altar space um, especially if you use it during you know scrying or divination this is a time of year that i use to ritually cleanse and re-consecrate my divination tools so this is a time when i get all my tarot decks out i get um out you know, my scrying mirrors, my gazing balls and everything. And I cl ritually cleanse and re-consecrate them. And I use um, fire and smoke to do it. Um, smoke for the paper-based cards, of course, and then running other items that, you know, like gazing balls and things like that very briefly through the heat and the flame of a candle. That's, you know, a way to do it. Um, some of the things that are um, the particular symbols affiliated with in bulk are um, bride's beds, um, candle wheels, uh, a Bridget's cross, and I will um, insert some photos um, of what I'm talking about. Um, and acorn-tipped wands that are called priapic wine, wands, and then plows. So this would also be a time where if you do gardening and you have a plow or um, tools, you know, your, your garden hoe, um, you know, I can't tell you how many yards of uh, field I have laid down furrows you using a walk behind you know plow you know it wasn't a horse putting it it was Paula pushing the the plow through the furrows when I was I thought it was a fun when I was a kid but it would be also a time for you to ask for blessings for those tools um, those are some of the ritual activities that you can do now the symbols of in bulk also include um, your besom, your brooms, and uh, white flowers. Okay, the herbs typically affiliated with in bulk are um, angelica, basil, bay laurel, blackberry, um, colt's foot, heather, um, irises, myrrh uh tansy violets and just about any flower that is white or yellow okay some of the foods affiliated with in bulk are bread based because this is also you know like the feast of loaves so you can another feast of loaves so you can do um like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, poppy seed cakes, um, muffins, scones, breads, any kind of dairy product. Um, I usually whip up, you know, butter, my homemade butter. In bulk is one of the um, times 
like during the day on February 2nd is when I would make my butter and then put it away because you can freeze it. Um, homemade fresh butter, if you don't salt it, only lasts for, you know, several days, like maybe four to seven days, depending on how fresh the, the heavy cream is that you get. You put a little bit of salt in it, you know, you can, it lasts a little longer out on your counter. Um, but what I like to do is do the unsalted butter and then freeze it. And then whenever I need it, I can pull some out, you know, so I do several batches and then I have the buttermilk left from the homemade butter to make, you know, homemade biscuits or um, cornbread, things of that nature. And I plan my meal around that. Um, it's also a good time for um, peppers and onions, uh, garlic, raisins, spiced wine. And this is also a time when I do a lot of my like herbal tea blending. Um, I make some of my own teas and I'll use a base of either green tea or black tea and then add in some herbs along the way. Um, I can, I also make my own chamomile tea, um, things of that nature. And then I do that on the day of um, the second and um, put some of those up in um, like mason jars and that keeps them fresh for um, quite a while. The incense herbs that are typically associated with in bulk is uh, basil, bay, uh, wisteria, cinnamon, myrrh, vanilla, um, and violet. Um, in Scott Cunningham's um, incense oils and uh, brews, uh, he's got some wonderful incense and oil blends for each one of the sabbats. Um, so, you know, I typically refer back to that. I have, you know, in my grimoire, I have some of my own in bulk recipes that I've done over the years. Um, the colors that are associated with in bulk include white, pink, red, yellow, a very pale, like light, sagey green color, or, you know, a lighter, um, like spring green, um, not the lush like emerald colors or anything like that, but a lighter like when the shoots are first coming out and, you know, it's got that little bit of that light green poking through, that's the color that you want to aim for. Um, and then brown is also associated with it because, you know, you're going from um, brown is affiliated with earth as well as, you know, the color green. So you can also use brown and then really spice up your altar decorations with and have that represent the earth, um, which is what I typically do. And um, then when I'm doing like my seedling blessings and things of that nature and have those white and yellow flowers on my altar, that is something, you know, it, it has a really beautiful a visual representation of the earth and then flowers coming out of it, things, of, things like that. Um, some of the stones that are affiliated with in bulk are amethyst, bloodstone, garnet, ruby, onyx, and turquoise. Um, so some of the activities that you can do in addition to, you know, making of teas, cleaning out um, closets and re-upping your protections for your house, things like that. Some of the things that you can do, especially the candle lighting, um, is to light candles or lamps in each room of your house and leave them burning for a few minutes. Um, and you do this right after sunset. And this honors, you know, the sun or the God's rebirth because by this time in February, you're starting to see kind of an appreciable, um, lengthening of the day. It's not getting dark at, you know, 
where I live at, at 4.30, quarter to 5 in the, in the evening on the east coast of the U.S., but you start to see an appreciable lengthening of the day. Um, so another thing you can do um, is to actually make a, a priapic wand. In other words, go out, wildcraft a piece of um, branch, strip the bark, find an acorn, attach it to the end. You want to use natural things to attach. So, you know, you can um, drill a little bit into the acorn. You can wrap it. Um, you can also use like a resin-based glue. I don't use, I typically don't use like hot glue when I'm doing wands because it's not a natural substance. Um, you can use like things like raffia to wrap the acorn to the end of the wand. And then during your in bulk ritual, you would bless and consecrate that priapic wand. Um, decorating of the plow. Um, I mentioned, you know, walking behind the plow. You would decorate the plow, you know, and, and do it with, you know, like flowers and colors that are associated with, ring, with spring um, and, you know, ribbons, things of that nature, and then do a consecration and blessing of that plow. Um, bridesbeds, okay, if you ha still have your corn dolly that you made at uh, Lunasa, you bring the corn dolly back out you dress her and then the next morning you you put her on what's called a bride's bed you would you know make a special little um raised place for her to lie for the night the next morning you undress her and um your corn dolly you know if it's you actually have like the corn um cob you use that you put that out like for the birds and everything like that okay and if it's wheat chaff then you know you break it apart and um spread it out for the animals to come and get the the wheat seeds off of it so um if you have the means and it is not too cold um if it's not too cold around me, I have an outside fire pit. I will go out there and light that and spend some time uh, doing fire scrying. Um, if it gets too cold, of course, please don't do that. I know when I'm recording this, there are parts of the United States that are, are like 40 below zero right now. So, you know, it's too cold to do something like that safely, you know, other than just going out there lighting it and letting it burn um, and coming back in to to stay warm but you know I really don't recommend doing something like that and leaving a fire unattended and that's the old fire marshal in me coming out sorry um, some other things that you can do is um, if you still have some of your greens I usually keep um, and dry the greens from my Yule altar decorations. And then I make um, an incense out of them. Um, and I burn them at in bulk to send winter on its way. Okay, it's a symbolic thing to send winter on its way. Um, so you can also put three ears of uh, your dried like Indian corn. Um, I usually keep some Indian corn around all year, um, but you can put three um, cobs of, of the corn on your front door decorated and you leave it until Ostara, which is the vernal or spring equinox. And this represents the triple goddess, okay? Um, 
you can also light a white like i said light a white candle and burn like some sandalwood incense sandalwood is another one that's really good sandalwood and myrrh is what i burn uh, and i burn that to clear a lot of negative stuff away for the um smoke cleansing of my tarot cards I use a mixture of rosemary, vervain, and myrrh um, to reconsecrate and reconsecrate and cleanse my my tarot decks. Uh, you can make dream pillows for everyone in the family, and dream pillows can, you know, incorporate herbs that would ward off nightmares that would you know, uh, keep negative energies away from your family, put them under their, their pillows and leave them there. Um, if you have access to palm fronds, you can make a solar cross. Um, and then you would, you can decorate your front door with palm cross and usually you've got some like red decorations on it also to represent fire and leave that through in bulk. Um, you can also, um, what is really, really popular during in bulk is um, candle magic, okay? And for starting your your ritual especially as a solitary i always prepare a ritual bath um for that specific sabbat um I, I do a ritual bath before i do any major spell crafting um any kind of esbot that i do with lunar magic or moon magic um and that's just a way to help cleanse and balance my own energy and to center me so that I am prepared for the magic that I am I am doing okay um so it is really important to do this and and I typically make uh, a bath tea or I make my own salt based ritual um bath with epsom salts that you buy at the drugstore um and essential oils um so it just depends on what i'm in the mood for as to what i do you know a bath tea you can use like an organza or muslin bag um typically and i'll show you this i use like a muslin bag something or not muslin an organza bag like this that's my tarot deck is in right now um, because i store my tarot deck with cleansing herbs and um, inside to help take away the energy between readings um, and just put the herbs inside that you know throw it into your bath under the wet running water the organza bag kind of keeps your bath from getting so messy you know a lot of people don't like that I throw in some extra essential herbs uh, I mean essential oils um, but it also, I, I tailor that, um, ritual bath for the purpose of my intent and my intent of the ritual that I'm going to be doing. So if I'm, you know, cleansing and consecrating, you know, I may use like a rosemary and lavender and sage ritual bath. If I'm asking for blessings, you know, I'm going to do one that's like rosemary and vervain things of that nature. So, um, candle magic is very, very popular for a solitary to incorporate into, uh, their in bulk ritual. Um, so, you know, think about it and really like, um, I sometimes see, do a seven candle ritual okay and I affiliate the candles with my chakras okay and then I do a ritual for balancing my chakras balancing the energy in my body you know cleansing me of any negative energy that it was built up in me things of that nature so 
that's something that you can do as a solitary and um, still honor, you know, this as a fire ritual without having to go out and actually, you know, start a bonfire or build a fire in a fire pit or build a fire in the hearth, uh, you know, fireplace in your home, things of that nature. So it is really one of, in bulk is one of my favorite sabots, um, right behind Samhain and Maybon. Uh, in bulk is number three in my list of favorites. Most people will tell you, oh, I love Yule. I love, you know, uh, Midsummer. Me, I pick things like, you know, in bulk and Maybon and Samhain. Um, but this is really a time for you to really appreciate and think about what your ancestors went through, um, what it would be like to um, have to be a self-sustaining unit. So, you know, what, what would it take to self-sustain you um, if you had the land and resources to do it with, you know, animals, with um, crops, with, you know, having to keep everything, make everything from scratch, not being uh, able to go to the store to just pick stuff up. What would that really think mean to you as a modern day person and the work that went into it and the thought and the energy that goes into it? So when you're doing uh, like your meals and everything, this is a time for you to really appreciate how your food gets to you and to appreciate the sacrifices if you're, you know, not a, well, even the sacrifices of plants and the cycle of life and renewal and rebirth and everything that is associated with sustaining you it is a time of appreciation okay because it does take an awful lot to sustain you know be self-sustaining and um it's not only a sacrifice um you know if you eat meat of the animals uh it's a sacrifice of you know your labor to bring everything to fruition it is asking for blessings um, so that you know your family can never should never hunger that you have the means to to take care of your family and take care of your home so with that my friends i hope you have a blessed in bulk um, if you've got any questions, just hit them up down in the comments or DM me on Twitter. Uh, all of my details are at the end of the video. And as I always say, my friends, merry we did meet, merry we will part until we merry meet again. Be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.